Namaskaram to one and all of you in this esteemed gathering. To Madhru Bhumi, a very good evening. Let us hope it is good evening and the weather behaves. I have been asked to speak on the reforms of the last Maharaja who ruled Travanko, Sri Padmanabhadasa, Sri Chitra Tirnal Rama Varma. My, the time given to me is 45 minutes. Necessarily, I have been compelled to cut down, compress, repress, I hope not oppress, uh, many of the uh, reforms, among the multitudinous reforms that have taken place, uh, just touching on some. But I think I will not waste time, but will start. And um, I have to say one thing. While we talk of Maharaja Chitra Tirunal, for many of you, especially of the younger generations, he would be a name, a historic figure perhaps. To many others, he may be a well-loved personality. But to me, I have had the good fortune of having been born as the daughter of his only sister. And from the time I was born, till the time he moved on to the feet of God, I have lived all my life with him. But this fortunately, is on the administration, it is not personal for which I am thankful. I have not gone date-wise because that was too much of a hassle for me. So some of them I have given the dates, some of them I have just mentioned. So that lacuna, the critics among you may kindly condone. Public Service Recruitment Committee, 1931. A civil examination was conducted for the first time to ensure the quality of those employed. The bicameral legislature of 1933, 1933 saw it restructured by Sri Chitra into Sri Moolam Popular Assembly and Sri Chitra State Council, having 72 and 37 members respectively. As an all India first, please note that, as an all India first, out of the nominated seats, 12 seats were nominated, two had to be reserved for women. This is long time back, not now. And this was the first time in India that such a step was taken. It was an all India first. In 1933, the legislative reforms regulations came into force. Willingdon Water Works, 1933, supplying water to the city. It was a marathon project. However, three-fourths of the scheme was accomplished during the Regency period, 1924 to 1931, and it came to a con conclusion in a few years after Maharaja took over. Sri Chitra Home for Destitute and inform, Infirm with the object of eradicating mendicanting, mendicancy and distress by methods of organized relief. During his investiture in 1931, the Maharaja had announced a donation of rupees 50,000 from his personal funds for this project. In those days, today, Crores are looked upon rather insignificantly, but in those days, 50,000 was quite a big amount. Electoral reforms of 1935. Travancore was the first state in India to introduce adult franchise. Another very important step was the Protected Monuments Act of 1937.
This was also an all India first. Padmanabhapuram Palace was the first monument to come under purview. Padmanabhapuram Palace is now in Kanyakumari district. As an old Travancorean, I feel very sad about it. But, but the palace and the land on which it stands belongs to Kerala. Though the rest of the area has gone to Tamil Nadu, Padmanabharam Palace continues as a part of Kerala. The government of Travanco had sent up a suggestion saying that some old buildings are taking a lot of space and they may be pulled down and government offices put in place. The Maharaja saw to his father that what was mentioned as old buildings was the Padmanabharam Palace itself. Immediately, he and his mother, Maharani Setu Parvati Bai, got into a car, went to Patnapuram, and within 24 hours, an archaeological department was formed, and then comes this act, so that Patnapuram Palace would remain protected all the time. Now, a move has started, I hear, to bring it into the world list of monuments. Another very landmark happening was on 12th November 1936. Those among you who are familiar with history would immediately connect it to what happened. It is the very, very famous Temple Entry Proclamation. And this brought about, this was the first time in India that all temples under the state were being thrown open to all Hindus irrespective of caste. This is the proclamation. Pro profoundly convinced of the truth and validity of our religion, believing, believing that it is based on divine guidance and on all comprehending toleration, knowing that in its practice it has throughout the centuries adapted itself to the needs of the changing times, solicitous that none of our Hindu subjects should, by reason of birth, caste or community, be denied the consolation and solace of the Hindu faith. We have decided and hereby declare, ordain and command that subject to such rules and conditions as may, may be laid down and imposed by us for preserving their proper atmosphere and maintaining their rituals and observances, there should henceforth be no restriction placed on any Hindu by birth or religion on entering and worshipping at temples controlled by us and our government. That this particular proclamation invited much praise from Mahatma Gandhi himself, who was overwhelmed with joy. And uh, the Mah Mahatma Gandhi's statements are very famous. Since that does not come in the purview of today's presentation, I am not mentioning it. Travanco University, 1937. The Travancore University was one of the finest universities in India among the princely states. A chair in science to the world famous German American scientist Albert Einstein, the one and only Albert Einstein was offered by the Travancore government and he was offered a handsome salary of rupees 6,000 per month. Unfortunately for us, he opted to go to the Princeton University instead. But the idea that you reach for the stars, you may even, you may at least get to the clouds. For harnessing, this is all coming under the university, for harnessing nuclear energy for peace. Sir C. V. Raman, Nobel Laureate, the Raman Ray, he got Nobel Prize for Physics, was approached. Research on breakup of thorium was conduct, carried out by the Travancore University. The guiding principles of the university were to study and encourage the growth of local industries and agriculture and to help in this field. Second, gradually develop technical and technological education. Third, to promote organized research in branches of applied science and fourth 
to conserve and protect Kerala and its culture. Colleges like Law, Engineering, Science, Arts, Nursing, Medical, Textile Technology, to mention a few, came during his time. Some of them came after he became the Raj Pramukh. Shravanko Central Research Institute under the university with six systems operating under it, including biochemistry, applied chemistry, and physics, public health, marine technology, fisheries. A success story is something very relevant to today's scenario. Under Dr. K. L. Mudgil, the director, light diesel oil refined to be used in buses for the transport department was set up by this government. Crude oil along with garage waste oil were used. It soon became an economic success. And the transport system which was established during Maria's time ran at a comfortable profit. Public health laboratory claiming high level of excellence and known all over in, in, on an all India level was put up in 1934. The health unit at Naya was the first of its kind in India. Actually, about the public health laboratory, there are so many things to be said. But again, it would be an imposition on the audience if, I mean, we, we enter into details and it's, it perhaps would take too much time. But it was really a fantastic uh, operational procedure, daily. Marine bi biologic biological, Marine Biological Laboratory and Aquarium were established. The aquarium which was in the seashore, in the beach area, was one of the largest in Asia. But today, it has vanished. It's no longer there. So many years now, the aquarium has disappeared. I do not know where. It was the largest in Asia. Revamping of the syllabus of the university. Maharaja Chitradrinal was very particular that the graduates who passed out of the Travanco University should have a very good acceptance all over. It was seen in those days that many students graduating from the princely states by and large had accept acceptance only in their states. Maharaja did not want that to happen and he re had the university syllabus revamped. Vice Chancellors from almost all the universities in India came. Just two of them did not come. One was from Bombay and one was from Delhi. For health reasons, they could not attend. But all the others came. Big, big names like Dr. S. Radha, Dr. Sir S. Radha Krishnan, the Benares Hindu University, who later on became the President of India. Dr. Muhammad Usman and so many others, big, big names. They all came together and they drew up a syllabus of excellence. And there are even photographs of all of them pushing the wheelbarrows with mud in it uh, to uh, sort of encourage the labor co, which was set up during that time. And I must tell you that the graduates who passed out of the Travanco University had acceptance not only in India, it was a passport to acceptance all over the world. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I must share a sorrow with you. It is a real, real, real sorrow. This Travancore University, with a such high level of existence, no longer exists. The other universities which we see today, territorial names, with territorial names, Cochin University, Calicut University, Kotem University, that is MG University, all of them with their territorial names. But Travancore, the biggest state, the most prominent, has ceased to be. It has vanished from the map. And instead of Travancore University has come Kerala University. It is no longer a Kerala University. How can this university be a Kerala university? It is, does not represent Kerala. It, rep it represents a small area with so many universities every place. I feel so sad that this Travancore University has gone. 
and the name Travancore has also disappeared. But all the other names are still going strong. Let them go strong. It is my desire and my request. Those of you whose voice can be heard in the corridors of power, could you please request that the university go back to its original name, Travancore University. This has happened in other parts of India, so this is nothing and it's not an ex exceptional thing. In many parts of India, they have changed the names and gone back to the original name. Land mortgage bank for farmers. Rupees 1 lakh was donated by the Maharaja from his personal funds. It later became Travanco Credit Bank. Agricultural Debt Relief Committee, 1935, leading to the passing of the Agricultural Debt Relief Act with far-reaching consequences helping the distressed farmers. Village Union Act of 1939 for protecting and promoting rural life and welfare. Jenmi and Kudian Amendment Regulation 12, 1933. by which the tenant workers became owners with some small conditions attached. Opening of veterinary and animal husbandry departments, cattle farms were started. Cultivation, especially punja and coconut, were given much importance. A fruit farm was started in Kanyakumari and it is hopefully still functional. This is another important thing, free food noonday meal for school children was started. Travanco was one among the very first all India level to start this. Radium therapy implemented for treatment in 1939 and widely acclaimed all over India. Public sanitation, boreholes, latrines, wells, pure drinking water schemes were all initiated. Legislation to streamline medical services introduced. State transport was established and run at profit. That was in 1938. It was run at profit. I am again repeating myself. I am giving myself the indulgence of repeating. <laughs> the first concrete road from Trivandrum to Kanyakumari was laid. And this is the first concrete road in the whole of India. The Pallivasal Hydroelectric Project, first of its kind in India. First stage completed in 1940, holistic utilization of resources. Maharaja favored small Czech dams and Italian experts were invited. Free education to depressed classes. Harijan hostels opened. Con con conduct of Scientific research into Ayurveda initiated. Vaidyas of name and fame were welcomed from home soil and outside the state. Maharani Setu Parvati by herself was well versed in Ayurveda. Schools for Muslim girls was started. In that time, the ratio of the students, the sex ratio was, for every two males, there was one female. That is a very good ratio. Now I think we have overtaken. I think the ladies are in the forefront. Sri, Sri Chitralayam, 1935, visual education in some schools, which was a step far beyond the present age. Traven, this is another very important thing. Travanco Primary Education Act of 1945. Akin to Rani Gavri Parvati Bai's re edict on education in 1817, by which state sponsored education was made available to all. That was in 1817, so many years before Chitra Trinal. She was the regent for Swati Trinal Maharaja. We should not confess, confuse the term regent. Chitra Trinal had regency, but that is not the regent. This is the regent of Swati Trinal. Rani Gavri Parvati Bai 
and the re-education, re-education, um, yes. Uh, that was, uh, what, uh, what was, yes, yes, sorry. Uh, that was perhaps the first time in the whole of the world, it was an all-world first, compulsory, free education, state-sponsored, the re on education. This is something akin to that which came much, much later. Maharaja had this uh, Travancore Primary Education Act passed and compulsory primary education was made available to all boys and girls between the ages of 5 and 10. Parents, please remember that, parents were punished. If they did not send the children to school, they were punished with fine and if they continued to misbehave, they were even imprisoned, but for a maximum period of two months. No religious instru instruction was allowed during school hours, even in private schools. It was not allowed. This did invite a lot of outcry and displeasure from certain sections. It was only decades hence, via an amendment, that the Indian Constitution incorporated it in the fundamental rights. This, uh, this statement was made by Professor V. Karthikeyan Nair. Travancore Bank, which later became the State Bank of Travancore and is now swallowed up by the State Bank of India. One more Travancore gone, one more. It had a paid-up capital of rupees one crore, which was very, very rare. And this bank came into being in 1945. As far as industries go, I will not even attempt, because the industries that dotted Travancore from all over, it was a huge panorama. And a, a huge credit goes to the Devon Sir C.P. Ramaswamy Iyer, who brought about this industrialization of Travancore. He was a very brilliant administrator, very astute personality. Just mentioning a few and the areas they dealt with, for example, coconut, coir, rice, rubber, sugar, white coal. We were a little short of coal in Travancore, so white coal was derived from wood. Mineral wealth, China clay, uranium, monocyte, glass, aluminium. So the list goes on. Industries over 18. It's not 18, it is more. FACT, Alland, Punaduru paper mills, Travancore rare earths, etc., etc., etc. A few were all India first. Travancore Steam Navigation Company of 1944, with co collaboration with big people in the north, it successfully coordinated and expanded road, canal, and coastal transport. Coming to the SAT hospital. SAT hospital in expansion stands for Sri Avitam Tirunal. S A T. Sri Avitam Tirunal Hospital which was originally established for children. Avitantrinal, incidentally, was my elder brother. He passed away at the age of six. I have not seen him. I was not born at that time. He passed away at the, at the age of six. And this hospital came up out of the tears of a family. Maharaja himself donated eight lakhs from his privy purse. And this SAT hospital is the nucleus of the entire medical college complex that you see in Ullur. This was the nucleus. And uh, later, while he was a Raj Pramukh, in 1951, Pandit Nehru inaugurated the hospital and laid the foundation for the medical college complex. Later, in 1954, the medical college was opened by Pandit Ji. By those, those, uh, from 1950, he was Raj Pramukh. Legislative, uh, legislative victory came to Travancore. Uh, for many, many things, Tra Travancore, like the rest of the states, 
had to get the green signal from the British. It became not only humiliating, it became this interference, became a very big non-nuisance. This Sir C.P. presented this aspect. It is a very strong presentation. He was able to convince the British and this and uh, with that their interference stopped in those legal matters. It was a very big legislative victory which set an example to many other states. Steps were taken in, in the orbits of post, telephone, armed forces, static arts, etc., extra, which are mentioned only in passing. I am not going into them. Music. The Swati Tirunal Academy of Music was established. Maharani Setu Parvati Bhai was a very, very great expert in, in Carnatic music. A number of musicians of fame and name and fame flocked to Travancore. It somehow sometimes brings back memories of Swati Tirunal's court. Not only music, but performing arts like dance, Kathali, etc. all received a lot of impetus. Guru Gopinath, his wife Tankamani, Chambangudi Srinivasayar, so many people were patronized by the court. Mutaya Bhagavadar came as the first principal of the Swatidhanal Music Academy and he was given a doctorate by the Travancore government. This was the first time in India that a doctorate was giving, being given for music. Now you have so many doctorates in music, so many. That was also an all India first. In Sri Chitra Trinal's time, many, the zoo, the zoo received much attention and was deemed the best in India. My mother often used to tell me that my handwriting leaves much to be desired. Now today, just now, I was in a little bit of a flap because I kept on seeing 200. The, the 200 received. What is 200? What is 200? Suddenly I realized it is not 200, but it is zoo. <laughs> and it was deemed as the best in India. Trivandrum Broadcasting Station 1943, forerunner of the All India Radio was established. As another All India First, the Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary was established. It continues yeah, from 1934 to 1950, so many changes had happened and it continues even today as a huge tourist attraction. Some people said that Maharaja had had this game sanctuary made because he was a very poor shot. He couldn't shoot anything. Many Maharajas used to go for hunting expedition. They would kill uh, the deer, the leopards, and wild, wild folk and get them stuffed and all that. Maharaja had a horror for killing. He was an expert shot. He could even shoot the head of a matchstick. He was that good, but he never shot to kill any life. And he made the sanctuary. The Travancore Devasum board was set up in 1950 for the protection and promotion, etc., etc., of the temples coming under the Tra uh, Travancore area. The Vanchi Pua phone, uh, Fund was started in 1941, the Labor Court in 1946. An emporium was started in Bombay to showcase the arts and crafts of the land. It is actually very difficult to sort of um, try and give a bigger picture of his reforms. But one thing more I will say, I have not written it here, I am suddenly remembering it, and that is mosquito eradication. Some years back, we saw a big banner behind the Chandrasekhar Nair Stadium, a very big banner, Goodbye Mosquito. 
Unfortunately, though Kerala is, was the first literate state in India, the mosquitoes were not, were not very literate, so they continued to buzz. Anyway, but in Maharaja, Maharaja's time, uh, it was made compulsory to pour lotion into the, uh, what do you call it? Drains, into the drains. Uh, and uh, people were uh, uh, employed for that and there was a strict supervision and, uh, in, and mosquito nets were given and malaria became very, very limited. In fact, when malaria outburst, outbreak happened, Nayatingara Naya was very badly affected. This Nayatingara has the first um, health area in the whole of India, the uh, health center in the whole of area. Maharaja heard about this outbreak in Nayatingara. He decided he would go and visit it. I think grandmother also went, I'm not sure, but he definitely went. And as he went, it was so unexpected to see him there one of the patients, a lady, a, a well-upholstered lady, she came running, she tripped over and fell at his feet. She tripped over, not that she was falling, and she, he bent down and held her, took her up. And she said, Tambarane and Asuha Mari. Uh, that, that sort of, I mean, feeling. And, but that he actually went there, when many people would not do that. He did not sit in an office room and order the lower ranks to go. He himself went. And now we are coming. I'm sort of coming to a conclusion because I do not want to tax your uh, patience too much. Huh. Correct. Three minutes more. Correct. Very good. I think I must give myself a clap for keeping to time. <laughs> The prominent, it is impossible to fully cover the administrative reforms of Maharaja. The prominent part played by Sir C. P. Ramaswamy Iyer during his tenure in Travancore and the guiding hand of the Maharaja's mother, Maharani Setu Parvati Bai, can never be underplayed. The state owed much to their vision and capacity. However, the sentence that he spoke, that Maharaja Chitra Trinal, spoke to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, and Sir C. Rajagopalachari in Delhi is very relevant here. They told him, you go back, consult with mother or divan or whoever it is and get back to me, what your decision is. And his, he just gave a reply which was just one sentence. He said, I'm quoting, in matters of conscience, I consult nobody. And that was his reply. And that has been a guiding principle in his life. He lent his years to many. He accepted many things and uh, many, many things were done. But when it came to a critical uh, decision, he took it. Incidentally, I must tell you one thing more. As an All India First was the abolition of death penalty. That is the first time death penalty was abolished. That was in, by him. That is another all um, India first. We will find there are so many all India first for Travancore and all India first among women who have stood as the first woman, first woman, first woman in all the whole of India coming from Travancore. I will not go into all that because that is again, but in conclusion, a few lines must needs be added. The driving force that enveloped this great and beloved personage, he was so beloved, so very beloved, was his total dedication to and adoration of Sri Padmanabha Swami. He lived in his Swami and lived because of him. I hope, I pray that he is still there at the feet of Bhagavan with him in peace. Thank you. Thank you.